I am back. And do y'all notice my t-shirt? Guess where I got this t-shirt from? Goodwill. That is a store I am truly missing right now. But until things calm down with the Lorona, Corona, the COVID, whatever you want to call it, I will stay out of the stores. But this was only like, I want to say the 50 cents or a dollar. I love the shirt. Um, and that's the type of five I was feeling today. So again, I already told you about Dancer by Lori Hewitt. Um, I'm about to tell you about the second book that I read. So I'm going to pull that up on here. Let me find it. But it's another Jason Reynolds book. I am determined. I am going to read. There are certain authors. You just, you have to read any and everything that they have published. Because you know they will never disappoint. They will never um, give you trash, okay? Or give you something you're just like, uh, I don't get it. Jason Reynolds is that author. Jason office is, uh, Jason Reynolds is that dude that is no disappointment. There's no, oh, I didn't, he did what? No, there's nothing I have read by him and I'm sitting there like, what is this? He has some heart heavy stuff. He has some things that really make you think about life. Um, this was like a feel good book. A matter of fact, I want to say the first book I read by him, um, Ghosts. That's a track series. It's like the Petrina, Ghosts, and I want to say True is one of them, but I might be wrong. Just look it up. But they all ran track together. And Ghosts was the first one I read, and it was hilarious. But what I love about his writing style, there is no particular writing style. There is no particular genre. He is in his own right, in his own element. So immediately when you see the first, the front of this book, when I was the greatest, and the dude's name was Ali. Of course, when I first read this, the beginning of it, or the, when you open up the book to find out what, you know, was gonna happen. I don't know why I thought it was about Muhammad Ali. I don't know. And when I read it, I was like, no, this dude's name is Alan. <laughs> and they call him Ali. Because he boxes and he doesn't box in the ring. He just trains. Because a particular guy he trains with, um, he's like a mentor to Ali. Um, I loved this book. I love the dynamics between Ali, Needles, and um, Noodles. Um, Noodles was named that by Ali's sister, which I met. I cannot remember her name right now. I loved her character. She was 11, but she was a grown woman. And she wasn't grown as in fast. Like she cooked, she cleaned around the house. She was like, she made sure Ali was taken care of. So, um, Jazz, that's her name, Jazz. And Jazz gave, um, Needles his nickname. Needles is special needs. And I was trying to figure out, they kept saying he had the syndrome, he had the syndrome. I believe he had a form of Tourette's. Um, and the mom... Ali's mom helped him coax with that by giving him knitting needles and he took to it, but it caused his outbursts um, to lessen how he reacted with anger, how he would just, you know, he would curse and have these fits, how he would hit and he, he just, they call it the syndrome and um, noodles is very hard on Ali, even though noodles is younger then um and i said ali he's very hard on needles and you find out later on in the book why he's hard on him um he he gave the excuse well if i don't treat him the way i'm treating him then other people are gonna take advantage of him and he's not gonna know how to deal with it but we find out there was some underlying issues to it um they started out hanging out on the stoop i want to say this happened in bed -Stuy. Um, and they were hanging out over the summer and then eventually got to the point they go to each other's house. We read comics, we draw. Um, I remember when um, Ali's mom, she works two jobs, so she's hardly home. And then when she is home, she's sleeping. So she comes home, sees Needles upset, and she gets him this yarn, but it's pink yarn. Noodles ain't standing for that. So Noodles said, you know what? Let's go down to the yarn store. And what's so funny about this moment they go first to the barbershop which is not just a barber shop he's a barber he's a barber and he has pets and he has pet supplies and whatnot in the store and then they realize he didn't have any yarn so they end up actually going to a yarn store like it sold nothing but yarn they even had knitting classes 
Noodles decides he wants to steal the yarn. And Ali is a very good dude, very smart. He doesn't believe in gangbanging, trying to be a thug. He says, I got to go home to my mama. And she ain't trying to have all that. So he, um, they go to the back of the store. It's obvious Noodles is trying to steal. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is, I got the money. And Noodles is like, nah, nah, I got this. And he runs out the store and the woman takes after him. <laughs> and, um, and he's struggling because he's trying to hold this yarn in his pants while holding his pants up and running out the store. And Ali, what he just simply does is leave the money for the yarn on the counter. And then he just walks out like nothing's happened. And by the time the store got back to Ali's mom, there were police chasing noodles and he wrestled them off and shot somebody. And he's like, man, this is crazy. It's a feel good story. Um, again, what I love about it is I've said this before to one of my students and I remember going to him and I said, I want you to continue being you. And he was like, what do you mean, Ms. Jenkins? I said, number one, you're not one of your thug life. We have a significant number of black men who live in suburban areas. And even if you live in the hood, but then you have a, a significant number of guys who live in suburban areas where there is no real, there's crime, but not like I can't walk down the street in certain colors crime or I have to worry about I have to be forced to join a gang crime you just live in an area where people just do stupid stuff they feel a need to be thug life they feel a need I need to be hard I need to do this and I need to do that no Ali was about his mama's business and he knew his mom worked hard to do what she had to do for him so they say he did well in school she let him do the boxing thing because it was like a mentoring because the father was there but he wasn't there um the father does have more of a prominent presence toward the end of the book but um the father and the mom they were together and he's been and he likes to steal stuff and they say he's not the best of it so he's been in and out of prison and he has this like a chop shop in the back of his car where he has all these clothes and because i never forget when needles and noodles and ali were invited to this party this exclusive party you had to be 18 and up to get in the party and the girl who works the door is a sister and that's noodles crush like he's crushing on her heart and they convince her to let them come to the party and they realize they have no clothes they have to try to get a haircut and then the dad he calls the dad and he's like dad i know you got clothes hook us up and the dad reluctantly does it and um they end up going to this party and that's when i realized when i was the greatest this is all in this moment here so you have to read it to find out what happened at the party and why what made this Ali the greatest in this moment and I just I loved Ali's character um he's definitely a guy if he was real I would tell my girls to date him I would I mean he's he was respectful he was mannerable he took care of his sister he took care of his friends he was that homeboy you all want to have that you can't say nothing negative about and the neighborhood knew that about him too and they looked out for each other that was another thing that I admired about the book the sense of community that was in the book how different people looked out for each other how so and so heard this happened so i'm gonna call your mom and i'm gonna let her know she need to check up on you they looked out for each other they looked out for each other and that's i love the sense of community how if ali wanted to leave the house and jazz was there at the house and again jazz was 11 um he would let the neighbor know upstairs and she will come downstairs and watch jazz and whatnot um how when ali's mom would cook she would make sure there was enough for noodles and needles to get something to eat then live next door because noodles and needles mom wasn't was hardly ever home um so just how the community really looked out for each other when something really bad happened to noodles and needles and really it really happened bad to needles and you have to find out what happened and what happened to ali how the black and his dad you'll meet black in the story <laughs> how they rallied around the boys and they made sure certain things happened and make sure they were okay because there was some aftermath after the party so i just i just love this book i love how it embraces not every black boy is trying to be a thug 
Um, not every black boy is trying to be hard. They're just trying to be who they are and who they believe they've been destined to be. And that's what I love most about Ali and his story here. But again, there is not a moment. There is not a moment where I didn't laugh. He's that, And that's the thing about Jason Reynolds. He's such... His, the way he writes, like you have some people, they have that genre of writing they stick to and that's all they write. He's not like that. Um, I'll never forget when someone compared him to Walter Dean Myers. And I was like, that's it. But he, it's like he took Walter Dean Myers style and took it to a whole nother level. So again, if you have never read anything by Jason Reynolds, you are behind the times and you need to pick up a book of his and read it. Happy reading.